Hello guys and welcome! My name is Sorin and today I will show you how to build a simple 5 volts mini UPS. It may look like a power bank but this is a proper 5 volts in, 5 volts out, uninterruptible power source. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB, which is a professional printed circuit board manufacturer with a lot of experience in providing high quality products and services at affordable prices. They provided the PCBs for this project, which will improve the build time and quality of this mini UPS. More about this in a minute. Let's begin from the beginning. I've seen a lot of videos with attempts to make a 5 volts mini UPS, so I came up with my own design. This is the first circuit I tested, and as you can see the switching delay time is very short, and there is no flickering on the light bulb. These are all the components for this project. You can salvage some of these parts, for example you can use the lithium ion cells from old laptop batteries. I also added purchase links in the video description for all the components, including the Gerber file if you want to order the PCBs from JLCPCB. Let's start with the schematic. I've seen some designs using only diodes, and others using only a relay, but in most videos the battery is not very well protected. In my design I try to improve this using diodes but also a relay. This 5 volts relay will switch the input of the boost converter between the USB charger and the battery when mains power is interrupted. Between these two pins there will be a simple switch to disconnect the battery from the circuit. The battery indicator is not connected directly to the battery, because it will slowly discharge it. And if the battery is continuously charged and discharged, it will be damaged in time. To prevent this, the relay will connect the battery indicator only when the UPS is running on battery power. I made the schematic using EZDA. Then I uploaded the Gerber file to JLCPCB website and checked the final details. The price for 5 PCBs starts at $2, just save to cart and order the PCBs. And in less than 2 weeks I received the package. The PCBs look really nice and the quality is very good, for this project I chose the black color. I'll solder the components now, it's better to start with the small ones so the diodes go first. This is a 3 amps Schottky diode with a small forward voltage drop. I will use it to slightly decrease the voltage coming from the USB charger and go into the boost converter. Because usually USB chargers have a little over 5 volts. There are also some rubbish chargers with a very high voltage. For example this one has 5.33 volts. And the boost converter needs an input voltage of maximum 5 volts to work correctly. When cutting the pins, be careful not to poke an eye out. Ow! Too late. Next the USB port. Now I just need to repeat this process and populate the board with the rest of the components. To solder the TP4056 module and boost converter to the board, I added some pin headers. But before soldering the converter, I set it to 5.1 volts. My assistant is helping me with the project, of course. I will remove the tiny LEDs from the charging module because I will replace them with a red and green bicolor LED with a common anode. I just need to cut and bend the LED pins so it can be soldered in the front side of the board. The TP4056 IC needs a heatsink because it will charge the battery pack with 1 amp for a long time in a closed enclosure. So it will get very hot. It only needs a drop of thermal adhesive. The last thing I need to add is a 3 amps fuse. And the mutant circuit board is finished. What do you think about it? I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, please check out my Patreon page. What about the battery? I have a few of these lithium ion cells from an older project. I bought them about 2 years ago, so I need to make sure they are still good. To test them I will use my Opus charger, and after a few charging and discharging cycles with 700mA, they reveal a real capacity of about 3Ah. 
I will use these three cells because they have a similar capacity. These cells have nickel strips already attached, so you can solder them with no problem. But I will use my DIY spot welder because I hope I will get a few more views on that video. And there it is, a 3P battery pack with a capacity of 9 amp hours. It's not very big, right? If you want a bigger capacity for a longer UPS autonomy, you just need a bigger case so you can stuff it with a big ass battery pack. But I want this mini UPS to be small and compact, so I will use this plastic case. Now we are getting to the hard part. I designed this PCB to fit this type of case, so it will be easier for you to build it. But we still need to measure and mark all the cutouts. I'll start by making a 3.2mm hole for the LED. Now I can mark the USB and micro USB ports. I will use my rubbish underpowered rotary tool now. It's recommended to wear protective goggles when cutting and drilling. This will be the cutout for the small on-off switch. Let's see if the circuit board fits all the cutouts. Yes it does. And the switch? Nice. But the space inside the case is limited. To fit the battery pack I need to remove one of the four screw mounts and two plastic standoffs in the back of the box. Don't worry, three screws are enough to tighten this box. For the battery indicator I marked a simple rectangular on the top panel. It will be positioned around here, above these components. I will stick the battery indicator to the plastic panel with super glue gel. The holes in the PCB match the plastic standoffs inside the case. I just need to tighten it with four small screws. I will fix the battery pack in position with strong double-sided foam tape. It's a bit difficult to solder the battery wires, but not impossible. A pair of tweezers is very helpful at this point. I will use this small switch, but don't worry about its size. This baby can handle up to 6 amps. The 5 volts mini UPS is almost finished. Let's take a final look inside. I would say it's pretty handsome. Let's add the cover with the battery indicator and tighten the 3 screws. If I slowly connect and disconnect the charger, you can hear the relay inside toggling between the charger and the battery. But the battery is very low, so I need to charge it first. The battery pack has a capacity of 9 amp hours, so at 1 amp it will take about 10 hours to fully charge. If you want to charge it with a higher current, it will put a lot of stress on the charger, because the charger needs to power the load and charge the battery in the same time. I recommend you use a good and powerful USB charger. For example, this one can deliver 3 amps at 5 volts. When the UPS is fully charged, the green LED turns on and there is no more current going to the battery, which is a good thing. For my first test I will use this short USB cable, because I want the power losses to be minimal. The battery indicator turns off because it's running on charger power now. This small light bulb will act as a 0.5 amps load. And when I turn the mains power on or off, you can see that the mini UPS switches between battery backup and mains power with almost no delay, and there is no flickering on the light bulb. Let's increase the load a bit, 700 milliamps. The voltage and current consumption are very stable. The flickering on the light bulbs is barely visible, it's almost non-existent. I tested the UPS with different loads. Here, for example, it draws 780 milliamps from the charger because it's charging now. And if I connect this mobile phone, the current consumption from the charger jumps to 2.4 amps. Even if the UPS is not fully charged, when the mains power is interrupted, the UPS continues to charge the phone. It's very light, so you can use this mini UPS as a power bank if needed. When the screen goes off, the mobile phone draws 1.24 amps. But I suggest you use this type of UPS with maximum 1 amp, because more than that will heat up the boost converter. If you need a 5V UPS with a higher current, you can use this constant current constant voltage boost converter, with a minimum input voltage of 2V. 
so it will work fine with a bigger battery pack, but the UPS will also get bigger. It all depends on what you need for your load, my circuit board can be used in both cases. There are only two small problems with it, of course it's not perfect. If you try to turn it on without the mains charger connected, it doesn't turn on from the first push of the button. This is because the three capacitors on the output are discharged and they act as a big load. The boost converter tries to charge them in a fraction of a second and draws a lot of power. And as a safety feature, the battery pack is disconnected from the circuit. But after a few tries, the capacitors are charged. Now you can turn it on and off with no problem. If this bothers you, you can use only two capacitors, or three capacitors with a lower value. But its purpose is to be a UPS, not a power bank, so I suggest you use all three capacitors. It will help with the switching delay time. And the second problem, the TP4056 module keeps the lithium-ion cells always charged between 4.1 and 4.2 volts. This voltage is high for long storage. The cells should be kept at 3.9 volts or maximum 4 volts. But there is nothing we can do about this in a small UPS with a 1S battery pack. And this is my 5V mini UPS. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, leave a comment and hit the like button. Bye!